on additional, additional classified documents and other government records just found by President Biden's lawyers. Let's go to our chief White House correspondent, Phil Mattingly. He's over at the White House with the latest on that. Phil, tell us what you're learning about this second batch of material that was discovered. Well, the last two days we've been talking about the occasion where a personal lawyer for President Biden on November 2nd, while going through personal items of an office the president no longer uses, discovered classified documents. It ended up being 10 in total. Now, that process has kicked off what has been a Justice Department review of those classified documents, but it also, behind the scenes, kicked off an effort by the president's legal team to search any other potential locations for classified documents from his time as vice president. What we're learning now, according to people briefed on the matter, uh, with both myself and Evan Perez, is that there has been another set of documents that have been discovered. Some of those documents are classified. Now, the specific details of those documents are still sparse at this point. And the president and his legal team, as they have discussed these issues up to this point, have only spoken about those first set of documents and notably have never closed the door to the possibility of additional documents. So much so that we have actually asked repeatedly if they thought there would be additional documents, including today at the White House briefing. There are no assurances you can provide at this point that there are no other classified documents out there in any other office and or home. Again, th this is an ongoing process, so I'm going to let the process uh, continue. It is being reviewed by the Department of Justice, and I'm just going to leave it there. And that was a response that echoed what White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said to just about every question over the course of the White House briefing today. A White House that has been very cautious about this and very clear that given the fact the Justice Department is engaged in a review at this moment, there are significant limitations to what they feel like they have said. Now, the president spoke about this issue for the first time, Wolf, last night in Mexico City. Again, speaking only about that first set of documents that were discovered, said he was surprised when he found out about it, doesn't know what the details of those documents are to this point. One thing that he did make clear and which has been reiterated today by White House officials is he uh, said there would be full co cooperation with what the Justice Department is doing at this moment. There's no sense that that has shifted in any way, but this certainly adds an element to an issue that is both legal and politically uh, dangerous for the president and his team. We have heard Republicans on Capitol Hill make clear they believe that the Justice Department needs to appoint a special counsel. They are starting to launch their own investigations into this matter, and certainly this will exacerbate that effort uh, uh, in that outcry on Capitol Hill, Wolf. Yeah, certainly will. Phil Mattingly at the White House, thank you very much. Let's break all this down with our correspondents and our analysts. And Jamie, you've been doing excellent reporting on this. So the Biden team uh, launched more searches and they found a second batch of documents, including classified information, classified documents. This is a big deal. You know, Phil and Evan's reporting has just been excellent on this, but right now it's what we don't know. We don't know what the second location was. We don't know what the classification was. Um, and we don't know what the damage assessment might be yet from, from these. I think that, you know, the fact that they are leaving the door open, that there are potentially more documents out there, speaks to, uh, I think, probably that this is not going to wrap up anytime soon with the Department of Justice. It's also a lesson learned, though, from the Trump folks, right? Because their lawyers did sign off and certify that these are all the documents we found and then more were found after. That's not a legal position you want to be in. And clearly the White House doesn't want to be in that position either. Yeah, uh, listen, I mean, you can tell the White House is trying to stick to a script. You saw Biden there in Mexico City saying very little. You know, I, I think the problem is this is an unfolding story. There are a lot of questions. You ask some of them uh, that are still out there. Did Biden bring these documents? Like, what did Biden know and when did he know it? Why are Americans just finding out about this when that initial search uh, happened in November? You can tell Democrats want to go out there and be on the offense for this president and defend him. But the problem is they are in the dark as well and they don't want to get uh, too far out ahead of the story if it gets worse and worse and the, which is another lesson from I think the Trump saga the sort of the details of it got worse and worse as the story unfolded and, and let's just still say this is very different mm -hmm. from the Trump right. situation because they are cooperating they are trying to do everything they can from the moment they found those first documents to going back and searching whatever the second location is. They, they are doing everything they can to cooperate. 
That was not the case with the documents in Mar-a-Lago. I want to bring in Andrew McCabe for us, uh, the former deputy director of the FBI. The Senate Intelligence Committee, Andrew, as you know, they want, they want to see these new documents, the first batch of documents. They want a damage assessment. What will that look like? What are your top concerns about these classified documents that have been found in the first batch and now the second batch? Well, Wolf, the government's primary concern in every one of these scenarios is first and foremost to recover the classified material so that they can conduct a damage assessment to determine if sources and methods have been compromised, do people need to be moved, do technologies need to be removed from places where they might be installed, that sort of thing. So that I, am, I would be confident that's what uh, the investigators and the prosecutors have focused on now. The briefing to the Intelligence Committee is something that's a reasonable ask for the Intelligence Committee. Uh, committee. I expect the briefing would take would be delivered by the DNI in the same way she briefed them when they made the same request about the documents that have been uh, taken in the Mar-a-Lago search. I would guess that what the DNI provides in that circumstance is not a absolute list of exactly what's in these documents, but rather a description of the topics they cover and more importantly, whether or not they believe there's a risk to national security. Yeah, that's the, what they have to investigate, and that's a legitimate investigation. Let's talk a little bit, Jamie, about what has unfolded. This started back in November when they found the original batch of classified documents at uh, the president's former think tank, whatever you want to call it, from the University of Pennsylvania uh, here in Washington, private office that he had. Now they found this second batch. Uh, so, I mean, the key question that we're, we're still asking is, the White House is refusing to answer a lot of legitimate questions, not just that Republicans want answered, that the American public wants answered. Look, I think one of the problems here, honestly, is they don't know the answer to these questions. This happened a long time ago. Who packed up these boxes? How did these folders get mixed up with these? In Look, I don't know about this second location yet and, and what those documents were, but, but let's go back to the, the first group. By and large, those were all personal documents in that office, including funeral arrangements for, for uh, Beau Biden, condolence correspondence. So somehow there were a small number of boxes there that contained material that shouldn't have, have been there. I think going back to those, that last, uh, the last days of his vice presidency, who packed it up? you know, how that all happened, I'm not sure they know the answer yet. And, and listen, getting to the bottom of this uh, is at the top of the list for Republicans who have all sorts of investigations uh, they want to handle. Lindsey Graham, the senator out of South Carolina, now calling for a special counsel. That's a big question. What does Merrick Garland do to go forward on this in the way that he did with Donald Trump? Does he do the same thing? If you're the White House, you don't want a special counsel, but that might be where this ends up. This is a real gift politically to Republicans uh, who saw what happened to Donald Trump and all of the uh, coverage and trouble that he has gotten into so far because of the documents discovered in Mar-a-Lago. A different situation because right. he didn't cooperate, but still Republicans are going to be all over this and trying to score a political points and also get to the bottom of what yeah, happened. Yeah, and the last thing the White House wants, Audie, I'm sure you agree, is a special counsel being appointed by the Attorney General to investigate. And it's not a given that something like that will happen, but I do want to clarify that it actually, if this never happened, Republicans in the House would still be going after the Justice Department, okay? They have broader concerns. They've created this sub subcommittee about the weaponization of the federal government. And some of the same Republicans who want this kind of committee are people who were under investigation, so to speak, with the January 6th committee. So there is an, a kind of antithope, uh, an antithope between these communities, the law enforcement and Republicans right now, it's going to play out through these investigations where they can bring a heightened scrutiny and scrutiny. And this is just another reason to be able to do that. You know, it's interesting, uh, Andrew, and you're the former deputy director of the FBI. Uh, the pressure is clearly going to mount on the attorney general of the United States uh, to go ahead and uh, name some sort of special counsel. But what's, what, what, what would be the role and wh how do you see this unfolding? And also, where is the FBI in all of this? Well, I, I'll answer the easy part first. The FBI is is working likely with the U.S. attorney in Chicago to conduct this review and eagerly awaiting some direction from the AG as to how this is going to be handled. I think 
Uh, I agree with the Republicans. They there should absolutely be a special counsel appointed uh, in to review this matter. So let's think about it. The special counsel. There's nothing magical about a special counsel's legal authority. They essentially have the same ability to investigate and charge crimes that a U.S. attorney has. There's no competence issue here. You certainly have very competent U.S. attorneys to be able to do it. The whole reason to put a special counsel in is when the public. Would be uh, would be reasonably concerned that an investigation had been might be could be possibly was tainted by politics. There is certainly that concern here um, with the attorney general making investigative decisions over the guy who appointed him, uh, President Biden. So, you know, it's absolutely calls out for a special counsel, and I think it it goes a long way to uh, addressing some of that criticism that the AG is receiving right now from the Republican side. I think they should handle each investigation in as similar a manner as possible, acknowledging the fact that the facts in each in each situation are very, very different. Yeah.